Well, today we're going to be proving triangles congruent by side, 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 and side, angle, side. So we're going to be proving theorems about triangles, and we're going to use congruence and similarity criteria for triangles to solve problems and to prove relationships in geometric figures. So we're going to make sense of problems and persevere in sol solving them and construct viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others in our assignment. Previously, you've proved triangles congruent using the definition of congruence. And today, we're going to use the SSS postulate, or the side, side, side. Notice triangles have three sides. We're going to use that to test the uh, test for triangle congruence. And we're also going to use side, angle, side postulate to test for triangle congruence. One new vocabulary word, included angle. Okay, first of all, let's talk about the side-side-side congruence. If three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then these triangles are congruent. So last lesson, we proved two triangles congruent by showing that all six pairs, so that all the sides and all the angles were, cor that, that all the corresponding parts were congruent, it is possible to prove two triangles congruent using fewer pairs. If two triangles have the same three side lengths, then they are congruent. So we're going to use side, side, side to prove triangles are congruent. They want us to write a flow proof. And let's just take a look at the figure for a moment. We notice that QD is congruent to AU, and QU is congruent to AD. So we've got two of the sides. So all we have to do is prove that this side is congruent. Anything coming to mind? Well, I would say that would be reflexive, don't you think? Isn't UD or DU congruent to DU or UD to DUD? And here's a flow proof, and I just love a pro flow proof, especially when proving side, 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 because I look. QU is congruent to AD. That's given. So, oh, there's a side. QD is congruent to AU. That's given. There's another side. So. You've got a side, another side, if you're, you know that you can prove side, side, side by just figuring out what that third side is, and it's by reflexive property, then you can draw your arrow. That proves this congruent statement. By side, 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 triangle QUD is congruent to triangle ADU. So when I'm doing side, 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 or side, angle, side, I tend to use flow proof, because then I usually write them out lengthwise. I put one side, the next side, the next side, oh yeah, three arrows, take it right down. Okay, time to check your progress. So pause for a moment, then come back and check your answer. That one was pretty easy, wasn't it? By reflexive property, we knew that AD is congruent to AD. So we've got AC and AB, there's one side. We've got uh, DC and DB, there's another side. So we're just left with this last side to prove, and it's reflexive. Okay, now we have a standardized test example using the side, side, side on the coordinate grid. So I'm going to let you pause for a moment to read the steps. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, and you might write these vertices down if you haven't already started graphing and drawing. But the first thing we're going to do is graph it. So that's part A. Then we're going to make a conjecture. Does it look like they might be congruent? You know, just sort of counting um, squares. It's not a perfect science, but, you know, do you think maybe they've got the same shape, same size? Okay. And then finally, we're going to use the distance formula. And how we're going to do that is say this side, WD, we find its distance. We're going to compare it. Oh, I guess they're going to find all the links to the sides first. So we've got a square root of 13, we're going to have square root of 17, and finally square root of 40. So those are the distances, the length of all the sides of one triangle. Now we're going to find the length of every side of the other triangle. And look, square root of 13, square root of 17, looks like they're all congruent. And square root of 40, sure enough, those are the exact same measurements we got on the first triangle. So we can say 
that by definition of congruent segments, all corresponding segments are congruent. So our congruent statement, triangle DVW, is congruent to triangle LPM by side, side, side. See how easy that was? It's time consuming, a lot of math, but it's nothing that you haven't already done before. So let's check your progress so you know what you're going to have to do. Look here, they've already graphed it for you. Do you think maybe? Make a conjecture. Sort of looks like possibly they may be. So now do the math, the distance formula to find the measures of all these sides and see if they are congruent. And they are. Excellent job. That was um, a lot of writing, I know, but I appreciate you doing that. The practice is good for you. Okay, the other thing we're going to discuss today is side angle side. So the angle formed, and notice this is a very special angle. The angle that's formed by two adjacent sides of a polygon is called the included angle. So notice angle B is included between AB and CB. By the same token, angle E is included between FE and DE. So when you're using side angle side, it can't be just any angle in the triangle. It can't be this one cannot be this one, must be the angle that is included between those two adjacent sides. That way we can prove side angle side. So here we have, is that a moth? Yes. The wings of one type of moth form two triangles. Write a two column proof to prove that triangle FEG is congruent to triangle HIG. If EI is congruent to FG, okay, and G is the midpoint of both EI and FH. You might want to draw this figure because it's going to disappear when we go to the next screen. It'll make it easier to, to see what we're doing. So here's the given and what we're trying to prove. So starting with a two column proof, we write what's given. Of course, using the midpoint theorem, we know that FG is congruent to HG and EG is congruent to IG. So take a moment to look at your diagram that you drew. FG is congruent to HG and EG is congruent to IG. Yep, we get that. Angle FGE is congruent to angle HGI. Notice we're using three points, three different vertices to label that angle because G is common for both triangles. And if you notice, those are vertical angles. So now we've got a side, and we've got an included angle. So here's two sides in the included angle. So our, by our congruence, uh, SAS, side angle side, triangle FEG is congruent to triangle HIG. OK, time to check your progress. What is the missing reason? And again, reflexive. So we've got um, ABG is congruent to CGB, because we've got some alter alter alternate interior angles, right? ABG, well, no, we're not told they're parallel. A, oh, we're given. Uh, ABG is congruent to CGB. Okay, so we're given that included angle. We're also told that AB is congruent to CG. So we've got a side, we've got an angle. So we just have to prove this last side, and it just happens to be the same one for both triangles. So reflexive property. Early in the morning for me today, had to stop and think about that. Okay, they want us to write a paragraph proof, and I will tell you on your assignment, if it tells you to write a paragraph proof, you want to write a two column or a flow proof, it helps you think better, go for it. Because to me, I start getting lost in a paragraph proof. Um, it makes it more difficult to see where we are. Something I notice about the markings on this is that we've got some parallel lines. And we're also told that these parallel lines are congruent. Okay. So if we've got parallel lines, this one must be transversal. Okay. So start recalling what we've learned in previous lessons. Again, this diagram is going to disappear, so you may want to graph it very quickly on your paper so when we're going over the example. So we're told that RQ is parallel to TS and that RQ is congruent to TS. And we're to prove that angle Q 
is congruent to angle S. Okay, very good. Let's get about it. Well, if we've got RQ uh, parallel to TS, then we've got some alternate interior angles. We know that angle QRT is congruent to angle STR. I'll read that to you again while you look at your diagram so you can see that easier. Angle QRT and angle STR are congruent because they are alternate interior angles. So you see that? Very good. So we can say that those two angles are congruent. Okay. So now let's look at RQ and uh, TS. We're told that they are congruent. We're given that. And now, by reflexive property, we can say that RT is congruent to RT, can we not? By the reflexive property. So we can say our congruent statement, triangle QRT is congruent to triangle STR by side, angle side. Okay, so if the two triangles are congruent, we can say by CPCTC, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, so we can say that angle Q is congruent to angle S. Because if they're congruent, then all parts are congruent. Very good. Time to check your progress. Choose the correct reason to complete the following flow proof. Okay. So pause for a moment. Study what they're giving you. Notice we're trying to prove by side, angle, side. So if you resketch this diagram on your paper and then make little markings on what's being proved congruent already, you see what you have left to do. There, you're wanting to prove DC is congruent to BC. Which theorem? Yes, if we're told that C is the midpoint of DB, then we know that DC is congruent to BC by the midpoint theorem. So there we've got that other side. So by side angle side, we can say that these two triangles are congruent. Very good. You're ready to get on with the lesson.